Alright, what's up guys? It's Tally. I just wanted to cover a quick little tutorial here on wood punishing. Uh, specifically though, how to set up with punish situations. So, um, normally if uh, you're trying to, you know, look for tutorials or YouTube videos on how to whiff punish and things like that, there's not very much. Uh, and if there are, they pretty much tell you to try to do something like this, going to training mode, record the dummy, press some buttons and wiggle around and then try to just, you know, reaction whiff punish. Like that's at least when I was searching, that's that's what that's what I found. I didn't find it effective at all. It, this is what they want you to do, right? Just like trying to trying to just poke out a, a dummy that doesn't block, and it's just a little shit. He just whiff punished me, right? So fuck that shit. That doesn't work. That's not really gonna help. You. At least it never helped me, right? But I'm gonna show you guys something that did help me. Um, it's very easy. It's it's very very easy, and uh, if you analyze high level play, and this is this is a fundamental, right? This is something that applies to any game. Uh, it's not necessarily Street Fighter 4, even though that I'm showing it to you in Street Fighter 4. Uh, I'll actually show it to you in a couple other games too. But uh, if you look at high level play, this is apparent in any any uh, Street Fighter, right? Uh, it's a fundamental, and that's why they call it fundamentals, and they say that they apply to any game, and their skills when you, that you build, uh, and they will transfer. So, uh, yeah, this will work for Street Fighter V as well. Um, so, say we have the opponent here, right? And, uh, you know, I'm using Ryu versus Ryu as this is, you know, perfect for a demonstration. It's not necessarily Ryu specific. You can apply this to almost any matchup, any character. Uh, pretty much what we're going to do is, with punishing obviously, uh, requires spacing. Um, and, uh, you know, you can try and judge the spacing out yourself, uh, which high level players do. Once once they get that experienced, that they can just, they always know all the ranges of all their buttons and their opponents. Yeah, you can manually space everything out, but for a new player, uh, this is just going to make some. This is going to make it so much more easier, right? So, uh, for Ryu versus Ryu that we're using for demonstration, what are one of his, you know, most common pokes? So it's going to be low forward and sweep, right? This is what you normally see Ryu players like to throw low forward mo mostly, usually buffered into like fireball or something. Uh, so what we're going to be using is the pushback to auto space ourselves from a block normal, right? So, say I have Ryu here, and uh, I just, you know, tap him. Tap him just like, I just tap him like that with a raw low forward, and then I stand. I stand idle, right? Now, I'm pretty sure I have the, I, I got the spacing right here, just using the pushback, where if we look at the other Ryu, right, and we're just standing idle there, and he tries to get at our toes with a nice low forward, yeah, it's gonna miss gonna whiff. Now, let's just set him back to crouching. Now, say, say we're crouching, right? And he were to throw that, uh, throw that crouching medium kick out. That's probably gonna make contact. Oh, it doesn't, but even if we're at that range where it does make contact there, right? Sorry. Even if we get into the range where it makes contact on crouching, uh, and we were to stand idle, it would still miss because the hurt box of a standing uh, character is much more narrow than one that's crouching. Crouching is a lot more wider and shorter. Uh, so that's kind of the ideal range you want. Uh, is the one that it'll make contact if you're crouching but not if you're standing because then it makes it look like an appealing spacing for the opponent to press that button right uh, but nonetheless even if you get the spacing to where it's like it'll miss if you're crouching or standing that's that's good too right or even if you need to hold back after you they block the normal so you can take a pixel step back so it whips but if you just stand it'll hit you that's all right too like just uh 
find the that's kind of like the area you want to be looking at for the spacing right it could be one button it could be a sh little string of buttons could be a couple frame traps doesn't matter uh, as long as you know if they successfully block it all it sets you up in position so uh, yeah back to this example so say so let me set up the spacing here right and if we have him record just like that set up the spacing with the with our the pushback from a normal we wait to see him throw the normal we know will miss we see it we react and then we use a button that we know will whiff punish so obviously you need to do that research when you go into training mode to figure out these little situations to find out what you need what you need to use for for your whiff punish um, this is very specific for matchups uh, you know this this situation here works against Ryu it'll work against Ken it'll work against Akuma Oni as just an example of similar button types but not against evil Ryu obviously because you know his low forward reaches so much further after if you want to apply this against evil Ryu you'd have to take a little step back after the, the low forward so you play around with it obviously um, but yeah this is what you, this is something that should really help you improve your game especially for whiff punishing um, because it's hard enough to try to space yourself, understand your opponent's space, uh, you know, the ranges of theirs and their buttons and the ranges of yours and everything. So uh, this is a, just a, a little easy way for you to set up these situations that you can practice in training mode beforehand uh, so that you can then set them up in, in an actual match, right? I mean, these are easily can be set up and they could be branched off of other situations and, you know, uh, yeah, so just uh, give it a shot. I'm just going to quickly go over a couple matches of high-level play in Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 3, and Street Fighter 4, where we're going to see top players actually use this exact same concept. So, uh, yeah. Alright, so I'm going to start with uh, Super Turbo here, Street Fighter 2. We're gonna we're gonna actually quickly before we before I start it we're gonna focus on the Ryu player here versus the Ken. Uh, I like this. I found this match. It's a it's a good uh, example for what I've been showing you. Uh, pretty much once the Ryu corners Ken, as you'll see, he applies the methods that I've been showing you uh, constantly, right? And he pretty much wins because of it. So uh, yeah, let me play it out. <laughs> So like in that first round, if you notice when he got him in the corner, he was using a lot of raw buttons on block to space him out to try to get a whiff punch. He didn't get any, uh, I think he, he missed on one attempt there, but he was able to cancel into a fireball to maintain pressure. Uh, obviously sweeps are cancelable to fireballs for Ryu and Ken in this game. Oh perfect, see right there, solar plexus into crouch short to space himself to get uh, the sweep whiff punish there when uh, Ken missed his low forward. So, bang, right there. There's a quick Street Fighter 2 example. Uh, we'll quickly look at a Street Fighter 3 example. We have a Kuroda as Akuma here. Look at that, right there. So, uh, Obviously, I was showing you everything based on block, and this situation here, Akuma used the spacing and the pushback from his crouching medium punch on hit. You can still you can still apply this technique with the pushback of normals on hit. It's just that uh, uh, for new players, I I suggest it on block because obviously to whiff punish, you need your opponent to whiff a button. They need they need to press buttons, and opponents. Don't you know that have are decent? They don't normally like to press buttons immediately after they just got hit because they know they're at a disadvantage usually, right? But rather when they blo when they block a raw normal, for the most part they know that uh, 
it's usually negative, especially like the example I gave you with three with the low forward on block, right? So uh, then they like to press buttons. At least this is from my experience. So, uh, but no, definitely like this. This example was look at it quickly again. Uh, you could definitely use the space because this the fundamental of of what he used here is exactly the same that we're talking about. Just getting the spacing from the pushback of normals, right? So his crouching medium punch hit. It set up the spacing for uh, Ken's move forward to whip, and then boom, whip punishes super. Third strike beam. And uh, let's quickly look at it in Street Fighter 4. So Daigo is going to be Evil Ryu here versus Blade Ryu. Oh my god. Oh, oh this is Blade debate. Ryu, wow, Alright, right mean? there. So, what did you see? Daigo has uh, Blade Ryu in the corner. That's see that first one there? He uses a, crouch, a meaty crouching strong, or medium punch, uh, uh, to maintain pressure, uh, as well as give him frame advantage on block. So he uses another one to potential, for a potential frame trap. It's also blocked. Uh, and uh, but what happens? Boom! It set him up perfectly for him to stand idle there to be spaced in a way where Ryu's low forward, like he's doing right there, would whiff. And uh, you know, Daigo obviously understood that spacing. He he he's experienced. He knows that. And uh, he sees the whiff, and it's just a reaction. Whiff punish, get the stun, and that's the rounds. All right. So uh, yeah, try it out. Use a Try to go into training mode, find find the character you have trouble against or something. Uh, find some strings or you know some button sequences where you can set yourself up to have the spacing you need to get them to whiff the buttons they like to use and then whiff punish. So uh, hope that was helpful and uh, yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe.